Can you guys all say, Team Stay on three? One, two, three. Welcome to Every Dog Has a Brain. Today, I have Kelly with me, and Kelly is gonna do some awesome stuff. So, we wanna start with showing you this little puppy. This little puppy is eight weeks old. He has a brain. He's already learning routines. He's trying. Dogs love to use their brains, right Kelly? Yes, they do. They absolutely do. <laughs> they need a purpose. They definitely do. They like to make you happy and they like to work. Yes. So they need jobs. Even your little toy poodles like to work. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They like to cry too. But that, that's a whole nother show we're going to do. Kelly, can you demonstrate with Roy? Absolutely. Roy, sit. Balagi. Stand. Balagi. Balagi. Through. Through. Sit. Balagi. Spin. Roy. Spin. Balagi. Good. Ew. That's just some of the tricks that Roy knows. Sit. Wow. Live. So how long did it take to teach Roy that? Well, we train just about every day. He's now 10 years old. Um, he was my service dog. He was not happy when he had to retire. He did not like just being a pet. He wanted to keep learning. So we train every day and even at 10, if I stop working with him for a couple weeks, he starts doing silly things like getting into the garbage because that brain just gets bored. So every dog does need to use their brain. Every dog, no matter how young, how old, or what breed, they all need to use that brain. They are so much happier if they get to use their brain. They are. So at what age do they start learning? As soon as they're born, they start learning. So the earliest you can start training, the better. Okay. So what kind of training do you do? I do everything from training puppies to training sport dogs for competition. Um, my personal favorite is competition obedience, but I've done obedience, rally obedience, dock diving, scent work, agility. I've trained service dogs, and I currently have a uh, narcotics detection and tracking dog that I'm a certified handler with. Very nice. So what is the most rewarding part of training? The most rewarding thing for me is when I finally see a family or a handler learn how exciting and how much fun it is to learn with their dog and to have fun with their dog. That is the most rewarding because I see the people be happy and I see the dog so happy. I would love you to demonstrate what Roy can do with agility okay. and urban agility. Yes, urban agility is something really fun. It's been great for him as he's gotten older and he can't quite do as much. We can spice up our walks and make them a little bit more entertaining, just taking natural obstacles we find, like this fence post over here. Um, with this fence right here, we can do under, we can do over, we can do around, we can also do two paws up. Um, and those are all things that make his life a little bit more exciting. It makes our walk a little bit more fun. And it's a great fitness exercise for him, especially at low heights, because he's using his core and all of his stabilizer muscles a little bit more. Which is helping his hip dysplasia now. Yes, yes it is, because this boy's 10 years old with arthritis and hip dysplasia. And you never know it when you see these jumps.
Roy specifically, um, he was imported from Holland to be a law enforcement dog, single purpose detection. Um, when I met him, the flight over from Holland had messed with him a little bit. He was really scared of people and loud noises. So I spent a long time working with him, building his trust, building his confidence, and I got to the point where he looked like everything you wanted in a detection dog, um, but he would only perform that for me. So he was given to me. We ended up retraining him to be my service dog. Um, so he was specifically trained in tasks to help with my PTSD and anxiety. Um, he was public access trained. He worked with me every day for about four years, and then he was diagnosed with hip dysplasia and the slick floors out in public just hurt his hips too bad. Um, when I retired him, he was just not happy being a pet, so we got into competition obedience. Um, when that got a little too much for his hips, we stepped back to rally. He's done scent work. Um, he's done dock diving. He really liked that one. <laughs> Dock diving is a sport where the dogs run down a dock and jump into a pool and there, um, there's three different events within dock diving. There's the distance jump where they measure how far out from the dock the dog jumps. There's air retrieve where they have to jump up and at least knock a toy down. Roy, come back here silly. Here boo. You're <laughs> Off. Live. I know it's been a minute since you were on camera. Uh, he's he, like, why are you pointing that thing at me? He was an extra in Sleepy Hollow. Um, oh, you're a moving dog too. Yeah, he's done he's a, awesome. a little bit of everything. Yeah. And now he's in, in the running for America's favorite pet. He's made it to the top five so far. Oh, good job, Roy. You're doing right? well. And you're my daughter's best friend. Oh, how old is your daughter? She just turned six. Oh and she likes to dress Roy up and cover him with blankets and then tuck her stuffed animals around him. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have to have a picture of that put up. So, Athena, what kind of dog is Athena? Athena is half Belgian Malinois, half Dutch Shepherd. What does Athena do? She is a certified narcotics detection and tracking dog. Um, so she will find drugs, she will alert on them with a passive alert, which is a sit and stare at the, the source of the odor. Um, she is also trained to find missing people with her tracking. So she uses a combination of the ground scent, the reinforcing odors coming off of the person, as well as the human odor from the person to locate them. Um, she has a really cool proximity alert. When she gets about 10 foot away from the person, she'll freeze and stare at them and then continue on with the track until she reaches the person. She gets paid with her toy at the end of the track. Um, she is also trained on article search. So if there are items dropped along the track or you lose your phone or your earplugs out in the field, she will go out, she will locate them, and then she will down with them in between her paws to alert me that the item is right here. Wow. And we had the opportunity to go to school and become a certified team. So we took a four week handler course and we passed our certification at the end of it. I passed the class. So we are now officially a certified narcotics detection and tracking team. Wow, so four weeks? Yes, it was a four week course for the both of us together and there was prep work that she had to go down to school and do by herself without me. That oh. was sad. <laughs> I guess we're going to watch her find me and see how she does. I'm going to go hide for Athena to find me. back here. Oh, what did I volunteer for? Ah! All right, let's see. If there's a snake, I'm going to die. All right. Oh! All right, here we go. Is the dog coming?
Christina Suk. Suk. Good girl. Suk. Suk. Zoek. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> 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 yeah! <laughs> Did you see that nice proximity alert she had? When she got about 10 foot away, stopped, froze, and stared at you. When she got about here and stopped, pointed at you, froze for a second. I was like, okay, there she is. Come on, let's go. <laughs> I keep saying there's gonna be a snake, something's gonna get me. <laughs> that was cool. Now we are going to watch Athena do her detection work. Tracking and detection. She tracked me very quickly, within two minutes. Stopped 10 feet ahead when she spotted me and then waited. She found the tissue. She found the clip. Oh, look at that. What'd she find there? Oh, she found my mask, right? Very nice. Wow, she's good. Clip or marker? She found something else. Oh, my cell phone.
This is great. Athena is tracking all the items that I threw. And if you saw, I was breathing on each item, so my scent is on each item. Hopefully she found my cell phone. <laughs> Did she find my cell phone? She did. Awesome. She found the clip? It's just a blue clip we're still looking for. She found the marker? Did you get that? Get your marker? We did. And the clip. Marker. And the clip. Bravo. Yay, good Athena! Girl. Good girl! That is some detection work. Wow! Awesome! She loves using her nose. Oh wow! It's putting your nose to good use. Yup. <laughs> So this is Sandia. This is Sandia. She's the happiest little bulldog puppy I've ever met. And we are still working on some basic obedience with little Miss Sandia. And how old is she? She just turned a year. Yesterday was her birthday. Aw, happy birthday. Sandia. Good now, girl. You're on TV, Sandia. I know. What a way to celebrate the big one. Huh. So Good let's girl. See what she can do. Uh -huh. So the big thing I want you to notice so far is how much attention she's paying to me. Good girl. If you can't get your dog's attention, it doesn't matter what they know. You're not going to be able to teach them anything um, and you're not going to be able to ask them to perform anything that they do know. So what I'm doing right here as I'm warming her up a little bit to practice some obedience is every time she chooses to look up and check in and pay attention to me, I'm slipping her a treat. So I'm using shaping. Good girl, which is rewarding her for behavior she's naturally offering so that I can get more of it. Good girl. If you notice when she's jumped on me, while well, I'm not thrilled about that behavior, Sandia, good girl. I'm not correcting it right now because I would rather her be trying to engage with me than trying to leave me to go check out the goose poop over there. <laughs> Sandia, good girl. So I just, when she has jumped on me, I lure her down so all four feet are on the ground and that's where she gets her reward. Cindy, are you bored? Let's heal. Cindy, good girl. Yes. So when I'm working with the heel, Cindy, as soon as my dog starts to rush in front of me, I change directions or I stop. So that way they stay with me. They don't get a chance to get ahead of me. Cindy, Good girl, good babies. And every bit of the way, I can be praising her for anything she's doing well. Cindia, good girl, that's a good baby. You notice when I start praising her, she gets a lot more engaged with me. Yeah, good choice. Good mamas. Cindia, good girl, good girl. Sit. Oh, so nice. Uh-uh, sit. Cindy, 
sit. Good, good girl. So when she made the poor choice there of choosing not to sit, I marked it with that ah ah. I corrected her, I reminded her what she should do, and now that she's doing it right and she's holding it, she's gonna get her little reward. Ah ah, sit. No, Sandia, sit. Sit. Thank you. Heel. Sandia, sit. No. No. Nope. Thank you. That's a girl. That's a girl. Sandia, what a cool baby. I know it's so hard to focus at a brand new farm without your mama. You ready to do it again? Sandia. Heel. Good girl. Sit. Yes, that's my girl. Release. Good puppy. Kelly, I wanted to remind our audience that sometimes when they get a new dog, they want to start doing their own training and mm -hmm. trying to do their own training. So the biggest thing that you taught me with my shepherds is that um, I should be, when the doorbell rings, Tell us what should be happening. You need to be the most exciting thing there. If the doorbell or the new person or the goose poop is more exciting than you, Cindy, then good luck teaching your dog what you expect them to do because you can't even get their attention. Um, I had a good friend of mine once explain it to somebody as you need to be the bacon wrapped squirrel. You need to be as exciting for your dog as a squirrel covered in bacon running around the living room. Wow. <laughs> um, right. And that's going to vary based on the dog. With Sandia here, she is so motivated by treats that just simply acting like I have a treat, she wants to be my best friend and be right by me. Um, Roy, on the other hand, is very motivated by his toy. If he thinks I might have a toy on me, he will do whatever I ask him to do, and he will start thinking ahead and trying to guess and figure out what I'm expecting him to do. <laughs> um, Athena is the same way, but Athena is also very motivated by praise. So just the praise for her sometimes is enough, depending on how much work I'm asking her to do. And then Mar, he just wants love. He will do anything for love. He likes treats, but. This is Mar. Mar is a service dog in training that I'm training for a veteran client of mine. Um, he's almost a year old now. Hi, Mar. And he has just, up. Oh, he is working right now and he oh. has his vest on, so he needs to be not saying hello. Ah. When his vest comes off, he's allowed to visit. Um, so when someone sees a service dog, they can't just run up and pet it? No, they should not. Okay. In fact, it's in the service dog community considered very rude to even ask if the dog's vest is on because wow. their vest that's marked with do that? not pet or service dog, oh, um, that's a way that. to, uh, uh, Mar, leave it, good boy. <laughs> that's a way to show the public he's working right now and please do not pay attention to him. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow, we just learned another thing today. Good Kelly. boy. So Kelly, what does a service dog do? What will Mar be able to do? Mar will be trained in specific tasks to help his person with her disability. Um, I can't go into too much about exactly why he's being trained, but he will be trained in deep pressure therapy and behavioral interruption, as well as a couple other things. Uh -huh. But he will be trained specifically to help his person with her disabilities. Um, and he'll also continue his obedience training, uh -uh, leave it, and do some public access training so that he has very solid obedience around distractions and in public and understands to just lay calmly under the table unless he needs to do his task work, um, that sort of thing. So a service dog, I've heard, can get a pill bottle, get a water bottle, is that true? They can be taught to retrieve items, absolutely. Wow. And Maybe an emergency drug like an EpiPen. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how long would it take? Do you do you train? Obviously. <laughs> so how long would it take you to train a service dog to do all of that? It depends on the dog. Okay. And it depends on the handler. Um, I have some service dogs that they were just unicorns and they were turned around and finished with their handler in about six months. Wow. Um, but that is getting an older dog who already had a foundation of obedience and we just needed to tune it up and add to task work. When you say older dog, how old are we talking? 
two? 18 months to two years. Okay, mm -hmm. 18 months to two. Um, Mar will so probably take at least another year to be fully finished. Okay. Um, so how, uh, okay. Um, but does Mar stay with you? He does not. Um, okay. He stay, uh, uh, leave it. So a He's, service dog can stay with the owner while you're training? It depends. Um, we would certainly, uh, uh, leave it. Mar. Thank you. Don't eat grass. Don't eat grass on television. Um, Off the television. <laughs> so if he were staying with me, we would probably accomplish our goals faster. Yes. However, he was already owned by his owner um, and she does not want him to not live with her. So we have tweaked our training plan so that we were able to accommodate her staying or Mar staying with his owner, um, but still accomplish our goals. We just had to expand that time frame a little bit. So, so they're licensed. There is no license for service dogs. Okay. The requirement for a service dog, uh, uh, Mar, leave it, is that they are specifically trained in tasks to help a person with a diagnosed disability, and to help that specific person, Mar. Sit. Thank you. So there has to be a doctor's letter for a service dog vest and I guess something from the trainer. There has to be some sort of documentation that the handler has that proves they have a disability and as a trainer um, I can help you train your dog the best if I'm working with you and your team of doctors to figure out what tasks would most benefit you. Okay. Um, All right and then we've got the therapy dog. Therapy dogs are trained to go out and help a large group of people. So like if you wanted to take your little Lammy, uh -uh, leave it, and take Lammy to schools to read to children or to visit nursing homes, that would be a therapy dog. A dog who goes out and visits other people just to make them feel better. How are you? So when did you get him? Uh, two years ago. Okay. Two years ago. He was That's from Hero Dog, so they give uh, dogs so are you their vets and first. Thank you for your service. Yeah for vets and first responders so he came to me two years ago and he's been uh, heaven sent ever since he's just just a great dog and so how has he made a difference in your life uh one he's my best friend you know retiring from the Marine Corps after 21 years and so how long did it take to train him did uh he was trained for two and a half years before he came to me oh. and then I trained a year with him and then finally he became mine oh so about, about two and a half three years by the time you get him done and trained yeah but he never stops training you know all the yeah. time okay well we'll get Roy we'd like to thank the farm today right yes um tell me the name of the farm River Chase Farm River Chase Farm thank you so much for having us here today River Chase um and uh like I said we'll be back monthly and get lessons with Kelly yes ma'am so let's get Roy back out okay well, Roy. we want to thank you again, Roy. Kelly, and we wanted to say goodbye to Roy. We couldn't miss saying bye to Roy. I Roy, know. You were great today. Thank He's you so my best boo. <laughs> and these dogs make our lives complete. They really do lower blood pressure. And everywhere you go, it's like no one has ever seen a dog before if you have your dog. They could have five dogs at home or their own dog, and they see a dog in the store. Oh, can I pet him? Can I pet her? Especially if you have a well-mannered dog. Yes, yes. Right, So Bill. thanks to all our dogs out there, and thank you, Kelly. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.